Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Valetti. It's a pleasure to be here tonight, and we're so glad to have all of you here. Uh, my name is Mac Williams. I'm president of the Alamance Chamber. We are the business association for Alamance County. This is an important event to our members for all the reasons Dr. Valetti mentioned. The, the local decisions made by local groups like the commissioners, city councils, uh, are important and directly impact our business members. They pay taxes, they employ people. So decisions about schools, tax rate, the sheriff's department, social services, all of those things have an impact on our daily quality of life and are important to our business members and how they conduct their business and for this place to be seen as a good place to do business. And so we appreciate, uh, we appreciate first of all, these folks being willing to put their uh, name in the hat to, to serve in public office. That's a big commitment. And regardless of how that happens, we thank you for your willingness to serve. If I may take just a moment of privilege, in addition to the local elections and the national elections that are occurring this year, this is also a year for the census. Uh, and while I've got this stage, I can't help but mention uh, and bring awareness to the 2020 census this year. Uh, that the census numbers that are going to be uh, delivered to the federal government on April 1st, and there's a little bit of a time frame after that where you can respond, but April 1st is the day where you have to tell the federal government where you are that day. Even students at Elon, if you're at Elon, you're at Elon, you're not somewhere else. You're, a, you're in Elon, Alamance County, North Carolina for on April 1st of 2020. That's where you need to say that's where you are. What those numbers say is gonna define who we are for the next decade. And it's gonna determine a lot of state and federal funding that comes our way for the next 10 years. And so it's a very, very important thing to do for everyone to try to step up and be counted in the census. And so it'll be coming to you. Uh, it'll find you or you'll find it. But in any case, I did wanna take this opportunity uh, while we're thanking the local folks for uh, being willing to serve and for all of you to be participating in tonight's uh, forum to uh, bring this uh, to your attention and to ask you to be thinking about the census, your businesses, your families uh, that, are, that are part of Alamance County once you counted. It's a very important thing to think about as we think about all the things important to us in 2020. I'm gonna ask now our friend from the Times News to come up and introduce himself. Thank you, Mac. I appreciate that. Um, my name is Donnie Fetter. Um, unfortunately, is my name is spelled wrong on the program. It should be F-E-T-T-E-R. So for anyone who wants to come find me, you know where to, how to look me up. Um, but Foster isn't so bad. 30 years in news business, I've been called much worse than that. <laughs> um, we are proud to be a sponsor of tonight's forum. Um, responsible journalism should be about informing this community. And we look forward to hearing what the candidates have to say so you all can make informed votes. Um, and with that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Dr. Valetti. Just let Mac know that I promise you we will be doing stories, Lorraine P. about the census. It'll end up to it. Our moderator for this evening's forum is Dr. Carrie Eaves. Dr. Eaves is an assistant professor of political science who specializes in American political institutions. She also currently serves as the faculty fellow for civic engagement and helps plan voter registration and political engagement efforts across campus. Dr. Hughes. Good evening. Before we get started with questions for the candidates, I'm gonna give you a few thoughts on formatting for the upcoming election. Because it's just a primary election, voters are only able to vote for one party's ballot. If you're a registered member of a party, when you arrive at the voting booth, you'll be provided with that party's ballot. If you're registered unaffiliated, you'll get to make a choice about which ballot you fill out. Um, around the room on the walls, you'll notice we've posted some sample ballots. So if that's helpful for you on your way out the door, you can take a look, take a picture. Um, you'll also notice that we posted the dates for early voting. Those are available to you as well. 
Um, when you get your ballot, you'll see a list of candidates. You'll be able to select three. So if you're voting on the Republican ticket, you'll uh, vote for three of our candidates here this evening. Same thing for the Democratic ballot. And then on the November general election ballot, you'll see those six candidates for three slots on the county commission. So I wanted to give you some instructions there. The North Carolina primary, as you're hopefully aware, will take place on Super Tuesday, March 3rd. However, if you want to vote early, uh, polling locations open beginning February 13th. Uh, around the county, there are three locations at the Alamance County Annex Building, the Mebane Arts Center, and Holly Hills Mall. Early voting locations are open Monday through Friday from uh, 8 a.m. to 7.30. On Saturday, there'll be voting available on February 22nd from 10 to 5, and February 29th from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. So we'd encourage you just to keep tabs on those dates and make sure that you get out there and vote. Now, a quick word about formatting for our event tonight. Uh, our candidates will have three minutes apiece. As you can see, we have lots of candidates, so to keep things moving, uh, I have some students who will signal to them when they have 30 seconds remaining and when their time has expired. This is, as you've seen on your program, a forum. Um, so candidates won't have the opportunity to debate with one another. The idea here tonight is to just simply introduce you to the candidates. Um, I ask the candidates to be respectful to one another, as I'm sure they will be. Um, if you want to speak to the candidates afterwards, we'll have some cookies in the back of the room, and uh, those that are available will stay to meet you and answer your questions then. All right, so without further ado, let's get to the candidates, since that's why you're here this evening. Our first question is very simple and to the point. We're gonna start and work our way across the stage, which if you're following along and trying to match names with faces, we have the Democrats seated on our left and the Republicans on our right, um, and we'll work down the list in the program. They're listed in alphabetical order, so we'll go across the stage. And my first question is simply this. I'd like for you to please introduce yourselves to us in three minutes. Tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, where you're from, what experiences you've had that might inform your work on the county commission, and why you've decided to toss your name in the hat and run for the Alamance County Commission. So with that, we'll start with, I'm gonna say their names a lot tonight to help you match names and faces, and I'm gonna say the whole names. I'm a Southerner, so my inclination is to call them Mr. and Ms., but I'm gonna say the whole names so you can put them together. So we'll begin with Bob Bird. Thank you. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Um, so thanks so much for being here. It's a great crowd. Uh, I am Bob Bird, and uh, after arriving to Alamance County from Pennsylvania and Ohio decades ago, I've become passionate about this community, and I've tried to do my best to make this a better place for everybody. And I've done that through my career and through the multitude of boards and committees I've served on and initiatives uh, dealing with everything from mental health and health and public education and the youth and the arts and the elderly and the list goes on and on. Um, but um, all this time, I never really aspired to be a, an elected official or a politician until I served on the school system's vision plan committee. And then I realized, this was in 2013, that you know, if I ran and, and I was a county commissioner, I could really make a difference in the lives of our kids and in our schools. So I, I ran and I won in, in 2014 and, and served four years. Uh, so I spent uh, 35 years at, uh, after arriving here on the senior executive team at Alamance Regional Medical Center. And I have to say that I'm really proud of the work that we did as a team. Uh, and as you know, that the uh, healthcare system that we have in our community today is a far cry from what it was like when I came here in 1978. And that didn't just happen. That happened because we had a governing body that had vision. It happened because we did strategic planning and we executed on those plans and we invested. We invested in our people, in our equipment, our facilities, our technology, and, and so that's what we have today. And I learned a lot uh, through those 35 years. Uh, I learned about uh, creating big budgets and managing those budgets. Our budget was twice as large as the county's budget. I learned how to collaborate and, and build bridges with people and build relationships uh, because that's how you get things done. So everything that I did at the hospital and, and through those 35 years that, that I spent here were all very relevant to serving as a, as a county commissioner. So I served four years as a county commissioner, and I'm very proud 
of the work that I did, my support for uh, public education, support for transportation. Uh, I uh, chaired the initiative uh, that the sheriff was involved in heavily about keeping people with mental illness out of our jails and connecting them to services. Uh, so uh, I have a lot of good experience that uh, I'm very proud of. And that's why I'm running, because uh, I'm running because my work isn't done. There's still a lot more work to do uh, to strengthen our public education system, to make sure our government is working for everybody and that our budget really reflects the needs and the priorities and the values of our community. Um, and to make sure that uh, we're, we continue to bring good jobs, career type jobs to Alamance County and doing that in a way that protects our environment because it's the, our environment is so important. So that's my story, that's why I'm running. Thank you, and, I, and, and I, just one other thing. I do have a website to learn a lot more about me, uh, bobbird.us, and I ask for your vote. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bird. Okay, next up we have Dreama Caldwell. Good afternoon, hello. Good afternoon, uh, I am a native here of Alamance County. I am Dreama Caldwell. I have been here all my life. I'm a product of the public school system. And so I believe in public school. I believe in public education. I believe in community college. I also have my associate's degree from Alamance Community College. Um, my children attended public school in this area. And I have gotten into this race because diversity matters. Diversity, inclusion, it all matters. And so I'm here to be a voice for all people and to also talk about decisions that may affect people from adverse communities, um, working poor communities, brown, black communities. I also have had a lot of years of lived experience. I can't rattle off a resume of degrees that I've had because I was actually busy being a teen mother. And being a teen mother, I raised my children in public housing, as well as I grew up in public housing. And I spent a lot of time navigating through the county through services, trying to figure out services, how to work my way out of this vicious cycle of poverty. And so I am here to just say that diversity matters. All people matter in people from communities that are not unheard, they are um, they have been speaking, but they've been ignored. And so that's why I chose to run. And I'd like to bring my experience. I have 25 years of managerial experience. I've managed manage multi-million dollar uh, businesses, and I'd like to bring that experience there and my lived experience to this. And uh, I also have a website, and it's called secondchancealamance.com. And the reason for that is this is a second chance for Alamance to include diversity. It's also my second chance as a person that's been in the criminal justice system. So uh, if you would just check it out and find out more about it. And my goals are to fully fund all of the schools and all of the areas, not just the certain areas of the zip code, but I think children should have a chance no matter where they live. They don't decide being born in poverty and they, they need to deserve the same chance as children who are not born in poverty. And also people who are criminally justice involved, they deserve a second chance to be back in our workforce. And I think that, that there are ways that we can do things differently in this county to include all people. And so I'm here. And again, my name is Dreema Caldwell. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have Kristen Powers. Hello, everyone. My name is Kristen Powers. And the reason I'm running for county commissioner stems back to some of my experiences in childhood. Um, my mom had Huntington's disease, which is a disease that is a neurological brain disorder that's genetic. So every child of a parent with it has a 50% chance of inheriting the disease. Um, for 10 years of my life, we didn't know she had it. It was misdiagnosed. Um, so we suffered a lot, um, went through a lot of challenges that arose from having a misdiagnosed disease. Um, it involved going to uh, the food pantry to get our weekly spaghetti and macaroni and cheese. Um, for that time period, I don't remember eating fruits or vegetables because we couldn't afford them. Um, I, I remember my third grade Christmas, um, a local church providing us with all our toys and presents. So those who do that today, thank you, because that's something I still remember. Um, and it also involved a lot of interactions with the police, um, some by choice and some not by choice. Um, Huntington's presents itself as like Parkinson's. Um, people think you're drunk all the time, so sometimes neighbors would call the police on us because they couldn't 
take the time to get to know my mom. She was a Southern Baptist teetotaler. She never had alcohol in her house, um, but still they thought to call the police. Um, but sometimes my dad, who is a former police officer, called the police or an ambulance because her mental health episodes would get so bad. Um, so as I was watching my mom decline from this disease, she spent eight years in a nursing home through my, um, until I was 17 when she passed away. Um, watching my family suffer from the stigma of mental health disorder, um, from physical disease and the inaccessibility around the community. Watching as an 11 year old as people made fun of your mom. Um, and I watched my dad raise me. Um, he was a single parent for most of my life um, and raised me um, despite all the challenges. And so that informed a lot of what I do now in the community. Um, my dad used to tell me, you know, Chris and I know you want to change things, but make sure you check on your neighbors first. How are your neighbors doing? How's your local community doing um, before you go off to somewhere you don't quite know, um, like on the other side of the world? And so that really stuck with me. Um, and I uh, took it so much to heart that I work 10 minutes from work. Um, I live in Southern Alamance. I work for Benevolence Farm, which um, as the interim executive director, we support women re-entering from prison by providing stable housing and employment. Um, so why does this matter as to why I want to be county commissioner? You know, I kind of like Dreama mentioned, um, I've seen how services can make a huge difference to people. I was a beneficiary, beneficiary of public schools, um, which changed and saved my life. Many teachers changed my life. Um, and I see our county employees um, pour their heart and soul into this community. And if I'm so lucky to get elected, I will pour my heart and soul into this community as well. And that's a promise to you all. Um, you can reach me at kristenpowers.org. My email is info at kristenpowers.org. My number is 336-525-1446. Um, I want to make county ex services accessible, and I also want to be accessible to you all. So again, my name is Kristen Powers, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have after the forum. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Our next candidate is Henry Vines. I want to thank each and every one of you for coming out here tonight on this nasty weather. Uh, I want to thank Elon University for inviting us to this beautiful um, campus, Times News, and the Chamber for, for hosting this. My name is Henry Vines, and I am running for the Alamance County Commissioner. I have been a lifetime resident here in Alamance County. Will soon be 67 years here in, in a couple more days. Um, I'm married to my lovely wife, Donna, for 44 years. We have two beautiful daughters and six uh, grandchildren. Why am I running for county commissioner? I love Alamance County. I always have and I always will. I'm passionate about doing what's right for the citizens of this county. It, is, it would be my responsibility to do what you, the people, would have me to do. As I have went through my life, uh, a lot of challenges have been there for me. Me and my wife started out a farm from scratch. We, we didn't own land, we, were, we didn't inherit anything. And I'm a farmer. I guess I need to be sure everybody knows I'm a farmer. I know what farmers need. I know what rural people need. We need representation on this county board from the rural sector. And I can bring that to the board. My experiences goes from being a business owner. I have had to manage uh, in finance, finances of my own. I have also done this for organizations and companies as well. Uh, my manage, I have managed employees. And one of my greatest things that's been uh, my pleasure to serve in and learn so much is my Farm Bureau experience. They have taught me how to work in the legislative field to come to a reasonable solution. And we do this from a grassroots effort. That's from coming from people like each and every one of you out here tonight. I have worked in um, in this community in many different capacities. I have, me and my wife have went into schools. We have taught children about agriculture. We have, I have built, helped build a gazebo or a learning center at the M. Holt School. 
it's always been my goal to keep our kids growing. We need good schools. We need clean schools. We need safe schools. The need, my time's up, I'm sorry. We'll have time to get to that in a minute. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Vines. So if you're voting on a demo, I'll let you go. Uh, if you see on your program, Anthony Pierce couldn't be here with us this evening. So if you're voting on a Democratic ballot, these are four of the five individuals that you'll have. We're now gonna talk to the Republicans here and we'll start with uh, Mr. Jim Johnson. Good evening, I'm Jim Johnson. And I'm very pleased to be here this evening, and I, and I thank you for your sponsoring. I uh, love Alamance County. I've lived here for 31 years now. My wife was born here in 1940, Francis Louise Johnson, and we've been married for 52 years, which is a good start, I believe. We have uh, four grandchildren. Two children and four grandchildren. We're very proud of our family. My experiences in uh, the Army, I was uh, the planning, programming, and, and budgeting manager for our all Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, Joint Rocket and Missile Systems. These, but this budgeting uh, entailed tens of billions, with a B, dollars. And I think it will directly translate towards uh, budgeting with the uh, county commissioner, county commission. I, during my career, I was an assistant professor of earth sciences at the United States Military Academy at West Point, New York, which is my alma, alma mater. And uh, during my uh, tour there on the faculty, I course engineered uh, the, the, uh, the student uh, offerings. And I feel that I can, uh, I can apply that to working with the Board of Education and Dr. Benson, the superintendent, who I've already met with, uh, in improving education here in Alabama County. I, I, I take that to, to heart as a prime, uh, a prime obje objective. <clears throat> I see I have 30 seconds left. Uh, I'd like to tell you and ask you for your vote. And if you have any questions on issues, please call me at my cell phone number, 336-253-5351. I cherish talking to you on, these, on any issues you come up with. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Next up, James Kirkpatrick. My name is James Kirkpatrick. I think you can. Okay, we're good. Yeah. Uh, I'm James Kirkpatrick. I'm 48 years old. Uh, I've lived here pretty much all of my life, uh, with the exception of six years when I was down east. Um, I'm a product of the public school system and uh, the son of a lifelong educator uh, who served in many facets of our school system, uh, which I think is one of our greatest assets. Um, let me tell you what I'm not. I'm not a politician. I've never done this before. I don't have an agenda, and I don't have it a vendetta. But what I do have is love for this place. And more importantly, what I have is love for the people of this place. I cannot believe that God lets me be part of this community. The values, the morals, the ethics that I have been taught by this community I can't put a price tag on that. And why I'm running is I have two priorities and I have one principle. 
Priority number one is our growth. The Triad Business Journal says that Alamance County is going to be the fastest growing county in the Triad. That includes Guilford County, Greensboro, Forsyth County, Winston-Salem, towns a lot bigger than us. And I know why we're gonna grow. God blessed us with geography, but more importantly, he blessed us with great people. And once you come here, you're gonna wanna be a part of this. So our growth is key, but tied to our growth is our education system. Without a great education system, we are not gonna experience the growth that is available to us. I have a theory that great teachers, which we have 1,700 great teachers in Alamance County, and my mother was one of them. <laughs> great teachers and great facilities make great students. And that's what we can do. We have a bond that's gonna bring things kind of up to date, but we need to go beyond that because great kids come from great facilities and great environments with great teachers. And while doing all of those, my two priorities, education and growth, with one guiding principle, we have to be fiscally responsible. I was always told you can't drink yourself sober, you can't borrow from Peter to pay Paul, and you can't spend more than you take in. We need to be good stewards of the county's money, and I hope you'll give me a chance to build the future of Alamance County. Thank you. <laughs> Next up, we have Bill Lashley. Good evening, everyone. Like we're working here. Here we go. Okay. I'm a native of Alamance County, born and raised. I attended public schools as well. I went to East Lawn. I was the first class to go to Andrews Elementary. I was very fortunate to be able to attend Broadview and Turntine Middle Schools, and I was the last class to attend Sellers Gun Junior High. After Sellers Gun, I went on to Williams High School. My background is in uh, finance and economics. I worked on the New York Mercantile Exchange for 20 years. I also worked at the Chicago Board of Trade, trading commodities, futures, and options. Uh, the reason I want to run for county commissioner is I think that the county is facing a lot of financial obstacles in the, in the near future. I believe as a county commissioner, like James said, we need to be good stewards of the taxpayer's money. People in Alamance County work hard. <coughs> county commissioner needs to work as hard to make county government the, the most efficient and effective way possible and have the self-awareness of where the money comes from. We need to continue to create an environment that's pro-business. We need businesses for our citizens to provide jobs and services. I believe our tax rate can recruit businesses because we do have a comparative advantage to our other counties that are high taxed neighbors. Another important factor of the equation in county government is public safety. I support our local law enforcement. They have an incredibly difficult job. And I think everyone in this room would agree that if we don't have a safe community, we don't have a community at all. Another vital important part of county government is public schools. It is imperative that we provide our students a foundation with the tools to be successful and productive citizens. And most importantly, that we give them the opportunity to achieve their goals and their dreams for their life. Thank you for your time. Next up, we have John Paisley. My name is John Paisley. I assume the mic is on. I think you just have to hold okay. it. Yes. <laughs> and my beautiful wife of 46 years, 46 and a half years, is sitting on the front row right here. Uh, neighbors and, and a lot of you folks I already know. I'm a 1970 graduate of Elon College. Uh, in those days, it was college, not university. 
Uh, I've been very involved with Elon and so forth ever since. I graduated from Wake Forest University School of Law. I have my Juris Doctorate degree from Wake Forest. I've been practicing law here in Alamance County for 46 years. That in, involves all kinds of things, including uh, I have a heavy corporate practice, uh, setting up businesses, running business, helping corporations run their businesses, uh, do a lot of other things uh, as well. I was a county commissioner, and, and Bob Bird and I are the only two on the stage that have previously served as county commissioners. Um, I served approximately four years ago, and, um, and then I lost by 19 votes. So, <laughs> so your vote uh, matters. Thanks. And votes do matter. Um, additionally, I was a chairman of the uh, and, and on the board of Alamance County Board of Elections for 16 years. I was on the bo mental health board and chairman of that for a number of years. I'm currently on the Parks and Rec board, have been for many years. I'm currently on the ACTA board, so transportation obviously is very important to me and to you. Uh, I've been on all kinds of other boards. Uh, an Eagle Scout, I'm proud to say, and Order of the Era. Uh, grew up on a tobacco farm in McLeansville, North Carolina. She's just barely over the, the county line. Uh, so I've lived in this area my entire life. Um, having served as one of your county commissioners, I've learned a lot. I know a lot and have a lot of expertise having practiced law for so many years and having represented so many businesses over the years. There are a lot of needs in this county. Uh, number one, uh, a large very top, close to the top, is safety. Um, involved in a case right now where a young student was beaten severely um, in one of our Alamance County schools. That should never happen. I had a meeting with Dr. Benson about two weeks ago, and he called me and asked me to come back again Friday to discuss safety in the schools. I will be very active in that, very supportive of law enforcement, and very in, uh, supportive of the school system. I have four kids. They all graduated from this school system here in Alamance County. I was very involved in PTA, served on the, when it was a split system, the uh, Burlington PTA, I was council president and various PTA presidents and, and diff different capacities of that sort. Uh, I do fly hot air balloons, by the way. I've got a commercial pilot's license and have flown all over the country for 35 years. And as part of that, uh, we have donated many, many hours Get doing science lessons. My wife, who taught for 42 years, by the way. Um, Thank you, Mr. Paisley. Thanks. I'm sorry I'm going to have to cut you off. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Our next candidate is Pamela Tyler Thompson. I've had four cups of coffee, so I will be quick. <laughs> um, my name is Pam Thompson. I am the executive director of Families Living Violence Free. It is a domestic violence and sexual assault agency. Um, I've worked with victims for about 14 or 15 years. I see a lot of folks in the audience with nonprofits I've worked with. I'm also serving out my second term on the Board of Education, um, November. I've worked very hard for that, and I'll talk about education in a minute. Um, mm. I was recently appointed to the Governor's Crime Commission. Uh, December 5th, I was sworn in. I've served on the North Carolina Domestic Violence Commission for six years, the North Carolina Child Fatality Task Force, Intentional Deaths, that's murder of children, for four years. I'm very committed to everything that our school system does. There, as a board member, you get to serve on a lot of committees and you just don't show up, you really get involved. My husband is Craig Thompson, he's an attorney. He used to be an assistant district attorney and he works with high felonies. I do a lot of his forensic interviews at the jail. My oldest daughter is a zookeeper at the North Carolina Zoo in Asheboro. She graduated from Williams. My second daughter is a teacher. She graduated from Williams at Randolph County. She said she would not teach here as long as I was on the board. <laughs> and then my son, is a, who's perfect, if you have a son, is a sergeant in the United States Army and he's stationed at Fort Stewart. So I'm a big, big, big advocate when it comes to veterans and law enforcement. And my background kind of speaks with that because I work with victims, and I left my office on a wing and a prayer here to get, because I had a mother and three children in a violent act, and the smallest one was two months. So I know what that looks like, and I know that walks into our schools. I was very instrumental in getting mental health on-site services into ABSS. It took over a year, but it, we got it as of 2018. So 
I am a killer for children. I am never going to do anything except stand up for them and their parents as well. So um, I've got a lot of experience when it comes to leadership, but I also know how to let others lead when they're better at it than I am. So I appreciate your vote. Thank you. Thank you. And last, we have Mr. Blake Williams. Uh, thank you for the invite this evening. Uh, thank Dr. Book for putting this together and Times News and uh, Mac Williams, thank you so much. Um, do we have any veterans in here tonight? If you would stand. Thank you so much for your service. <laughs> you are what it's all about. Uh, so I'm a sinner saved by grace, just so you know that. Uh, my bride, Judy, is here with, with me tonight of 47 years. And uh, we have uh, four children, 16 grandchildren, and two more coming. So we have a house full at, at Christmas and Easter. Uh, I have I've spent 32 years in Alamance County, and I do love it here. I'm from upstate New York, from the, lake, from the Finger Lake country. Uh, and so we still have a residence there, but uh, all of our time is down here. My experience is I spent 20 years plus at IBM as a program manager uh, overseeing introduction of new products. So I have a massive experience in that. I'm also a retired general officer. I'm a brigadier general, and I had 38 years with the US Army. And as a deputy commander of a division, we trained 92,000 soldiers a year uh, to prepare for, to go in, in over in all the theaters of operation. And so I had nine brigades, brigades east of the Mississippi. So my job was to go and rotate amongst those brigades to make sure that our young people and our warriors were being researched and taken care of and trained, and they'd be put on a bird knowing that, that they were going to survive, and they were trained to survive in the battlefield. I'm a Second Amendment supporter, NRA life member, and I also sit on the board at Alamance Community College. And that is a big deal to me. That is so important. Uh, life, my, my platform is lifelong education. So I've, I've been on the board for five years now. I chair the Buildings and Grounds Committee, which is responsible for all the bond uh, activity that's going to be going on. And I've, and I've uh, sat on all of the other boards there, personnel, the Curriculum Committee, and, and Budget and Finance. So I have that experience as well. <clears throat> I'm going to get us back on time. So uh, my Facebook page is at Williams for Alamance, for the number four. Thank you for the invite for being here. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, let's move on to our first uh, sort of substantive question. And to keep things moving, I'm going to ask the audience to not clap between answers. I know it will be very challenging for you, but we'll, we'll try to keep it moving. I'm also going to keep the candidates on their toes and call on them a little out of order. So my question is this. Education has been a topic of much discussion in Alamance County recently. We heard about it in many of your introductions. Some believe and argue that public education in the county is critically tied to economic development. Do you agree with this sentiment? And what role do you believe the commission should play in education? And we're going to begin with uh, Mr. Paisley. Again, John Paisley. <laughs> Name is John Paisley. Um, one, economic development is essential to education. Uh, if we don't bring in industry and, and so forth, we don't have the dollars to spend on education that we so desperately need anyway. That's number one. Number two, we have such wonderful facilities here. We have Dr. Gatewood from ACC, who's a close friend, and, and we've worked together many times. We have Elon University, which I'm a proud graduate of. We have uh, really good schools and several, a number of really good private schools. But we've got to support all of that. The bond that we just passed, 150 for the school system and, 100, and the remainder of the 185, is that correct, um, is, it goes to ACC. The facilities that are building will help us keep our students here in the community, one, educate them, two, and we've got to set up Alamance County. Alamance County has so much to offer. I'm on the Parks and Rec Board. We have Cedar Rock Park. We have all kinds of facilities here that most people don't even know about. We've got to tell people outside of ACC and, 
and Mr. Brown, our uh, elements, uh, Mac, what's your <laughs> community? Uh, and I'm a member of that. I can't, can't even remember the names. <laughs> but any, in any event, um, you do such a good job and have brought a lot of industry into the county. We've got to use those resources, build our dollars to pour back into education and other things that we need here in this county. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Kristen Powers, you're up next. So, um, yes, I think education is crucial to economic development. Um, I also am extremely impressed with programs like Alamance Community College. I've had the fortune of last semester and this semester, I'm enrolled in their Spanish uh, certificate program. Um, and so it's been a, a great experience to get to know students um, and professors and staff at Alamance Community College through that. Um, in regards to economic de development, I think commissioners especially need to not only make sure our education is of the highest quality and that students and teachers who spend a third of the day, their day in buildings are going to the healthiest, safest buildings possible. Um, I think they also make sure our economy is attractive to the rising leaders of our community, to the people who are currently at ACC, who are currently in ABSS. Um, I've talked to dozens of ACC students and Elon students um, and have unfortunately heard the phrase, no chance Alamance, more than once. Um, and a lot of people just don't see the opportunity to stay and work here. They might, maybe they'll stay here, but they won't find the work. And in part, that's because um, they're having trouble finding wages that are um, respectable and decent for the amount of education they have. They are struggling, I think, with finding engaging industries that are diverse and um, and offer the type of work they want to do. So I think commissioners can be wise about that because um, you know we want to be able to make Alamance County a place people can call home forever um, beyond just their education. And I think there are clearly a lot of people up here on the stage who've been able to benefit from a county that does that. And I want to make sure we continue that. Uh, and again, make sure our students are getting the best as their time as students, but also can find the opportunity here beyond that. Thank you. Henry. Henry Vines, you're up next. Education and the economy. They work hand in hand. We have to have a good education system here starting at the very beginning to educate our children so that they can further on their education. Back in my time when it was the Technical Institute of Alamance, I attended that. I learned maintenance in in that program it is key to keep good working people and train them in this county how are we going to do this is by educating them as commissioners it is our responsibility to provide the tools and the buildings so that these so that these uh, educators can uh, teach our kids to keep our kids safe in a clean environment. This is what we have to do. As far as uh, economics, we have to promote our county for development, for industry that would be interested in coming here. The first and foremost thing they're gonna look for in Alamance County is that you have a good school system. Do you have a good training program in your colleges and university? We are moving forward in that with our law enforcement uh, training center that's gonna be built and get into, into progress. Hopefully that will draw individuals into that school that will want to stay here in Alamance County and serve because our sheriff is having a hard time recruiting people. And these are just a few of the things that we can do as commissioners in order to ensure the betterment and economic development of this county. Also, I have to say that farming, as many people may not think, farming is the number one industry in Alamance County. We need young people to get interested in farming because without farmers, we can't eat. Without land, we can't grow. So I ask for your support 
and being your commissioner. Thank you. Next up, we have Pamela Tyler Thompson. Well, obviously, I'm extremely pro-education, and the first thing that um, a company is always going to ask when they're courting us to see if they're going to build here is what's the status of your schools, not only the shape of them, but as far as the inside soul of them. And when you have a county that has passed a $150 million bond just for us and 30 plus for the ACC, that really tells leaders that are coming shopping for Alamance County that we are committed to taking care of our young people. Um, we've got many kind of programs in our school system that launch kids right into a career because I think every child needs to be able to choose the path that is right for them, whether it be trade school, community school, four-year college, or the military. But um, that's going to be one really obvious thing that they're going to be looking for because we are building their workforce. And I can't stress enough how much we need to prepare our children because they are going to take care of us. And I want them well equipped. And I want them solid and well and healthy. So absolutely, these two are like sisters when it comes to education and um, the business community and bringing stuff like that here. It, it's a no-brainer. Absolutely. Thank you. Bob Bird. Thank you. Um, yes. Uh, Public education, a strong system of public education is definitely probably the most important economic development strategy because when companies are thinking about locating here, they want to make sure that there's an educated workforce and they do look to see that there's a strong school system. So it's important if we're going to have really high paying career type jobs, then we need to support that with a strong public education system. And those high paying career type jobs are going to add to our economy. I mean, it's, that's how we're gonna help try to eliminate poverty and, and make housing more affordable. And I mean, it just cures a lot of societal ills uh, to making sure that uh, we have an abundance of really good paying jobs. So I know that uh, when I worked at the hospital, one of my jobs was to recruit physicians to this community. And uh, sometimes that was a hard sell because they thought it would be better off if, uh, for their kids if they moved to a different community where they thought the school system was better. And so we lost their, with the physicians who didn't come, we lost their tax revenue because uh, they were paying taxes somewhere else. And they were shopping in some of the other county stores and in their restaurants. And they were serving their communities as mentors to their children in various churches and civic organizations instead of serving, being mentors for our kids here. So we lose out in a lot of ways uh, because of our, uh, the perception of our public education system, which, by the way, I think we have a really good system, but we have some issues to uh, address to, to strengthen them. So what can commissioners do? Well, we can invest in our teachers. Now, I'm not one to just throw money at the school system. I hear people say that. Well, you just can't, you're not going to get results just by throwing money. But the school system has a strategic plan, and those strategies are really important. And one of them is to make sure that our teachers are being paid competitively, because we lose teachers to other counties who pay more, to make sure that they have the kind of uh, to the supports, to make sure that our facilities are safe and modern and doing their job to, to good environments for our kids to learn in. There's like five or six. Uh, different strategies and so that's that's what we can do and and you know and it takes a village to educate our kids it's not just about our school system we got to figure out how to support early childhood development early childhood education deal with childhood trauma and, and the I terrible impacts that uh, uh, traumatic stress has on kids later on in lives as adults uh, so you know I, I served on the Allen Mass Chiefs uh, steering committee as the as a, the uh, Board of Commissioners member when it was first formed, and that group is really trying to align all the community resources, if you think of all the, the agencies and organizations that touch kids, to organize them in a collective impact sort of way to really move the needle on, around certain goals that everybody adopts as their goals. For example, making sure that children are kindergarten ready by the time they reach kindergarten. So there's a number of ways that the Board of Commissioners can support public education, and just being leaders, advocate, rally our community around our kids and around our schools. That's how we can f impact uh, public education in our community. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, next, Blake Williams. Yeah, I, I concur with ev everything that everyone has set up here. Uh, we have a, a serious problem in, Al in Alamance County, that being that we have jobs that have come in, or companies that have come in here and set up companies and they don't have the, the qualified workers to fill some of these jobs that are out there. So at ACC, at the community college, we've s sat down with the companies. We've developed curriculum specifically to meet the needs of these companies. And so that's already in process. 
there are other companies that would like to come to Alamance County, but we don't have the workforce large enough to meet the demands of these companies. And so that's a challenge that we have. So we need to start, you know, I, I'm a, I, lifelong education is important to me. And we do need to get start with our uh, kids and four and five year olds at, at uh, preschools. They need to be taught because that's when the brains are, are being developed in their cognitive state. And um, it's right up through, through, through a middle school, through high school. In the high schools, you know, we have an 80% graduation, graduation rate on an average, and some of the schools are just a little over 60. So we need to do a better job of that because these kids coming out of school, not graduating, is going to be a burden to our economy and to the county. So we need to do a better job of doing that. Thank you. Thank you. Jim Johnson. Yes, thank you. Uh, economic development obviously increases uh, property values, and uh, that gives more resources for, among other things, the education system. And here we have a, a, a system here in Alamance County that we should be proud of. Alamance Community College is one of the best uh, community colleges in the state, in my opinion. And all the way up to Elon University, which I look at very, very frankly and say that is the uh, linchpin, the key, the leading university in the Southern Ivy League. Compared with, uh, it, it compares with universities such as Duke. So, uh, anyway. Veterans were mentioned a bit earlier. I, I, I define veterans in a different way, not just Army, Air Force, uh, Navy, and Marine Corps, but also first responders, educators, and, for, and, and healthcare workers. They're all veterans in my eye. So I'd like to ask that the veterans in my, under my defini expanded definition stand up and be recognized momentarily here. I failed to mention earlier that I'm uh, the, the uh, conservative Christian Republican candidate. And uh, that's all. I thank, I thank you for your time. Thank you. Dreama Caldwell. Thank you. So I think that uh, education directly affects everything. It affects crime. It affects housing. It affects jobs. So it's very important that we get this right. And it's right that we get it right for all the children in our communities. Um, there are parts of our county that has been neglected. And so as a result, the schools are neglected. And like uh, one of my colleagues here, I also attended Broadview and then went to Turrentine. And it was like two different worlds. And that shouldn't happen in this county. And so when we talk about things, we have to talk about that equity and equality are not the same thing. And so we must provide places. There are places where we need to do a little bit extra because children in those areas may need a little bit more because they may have a lack of resources. And so we have to address that uh, issue to talk about the gap, widening the gap between the races that is going on for the uh, education. This directly affects us uh, as economy. I've been here my whole life and often my classmates say, you're still in Burlington? Yeah, I'm still here. <laughs> They're left, they're gone and they left. And I could have done the same thing, but I chose to stay here in my community and work in my community and work with people that are staying here that don't have the option to leave because not everybody has the option to leave our community. And so it's very important that they are given a chance to get out of the situation that they're in. And education is the way to directly to start. Not only do we support our teachers, but for me, I had a band teacher that was awesome. So we need to support all of our teachers, not just our main educators, that's our people, our teaching assistants need to be supported, our lunch programs need to be supported. Every, every piece of this puzzle has to be supported to make a whole child. And that's what we need to be educating, the whole child. And when I was in early childhood, I spent 25 years in early childhood, and I can tell you that there were children that you couldn't talk about learning until you talked about having something to eat. 
You couldn't talk about learning until their mom and dad had been up all night fighting. So before I could teach them, I'd have to let them go in the corner and lay down. So we have to address all of the issues, the root issues as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, James Kirkpatrick. Could I ask you to read the question again? Sure. Education's been a topic of much discussion, as you've heard tonight. Some people believe that public education in the county is critically tied to economic development. Do you agree with that sentiment, and what role do you believe the commission should play? Absolutely, I agree. But I'd also like to, I don't have a website. <laughs> so um, yes, I agree, 100%. Um, economic, economic development is the key to broaden the tax base. Because what does it take to educate kids? Money. But it also takes love. And it takes love from teachers and those that are out there in the trenches. And we need to be listening to them because they know the true needs of our students. What can the county do to facilitate growth? I've already told you that was the first thing that I talked about was my priority was growth. We have great people. If you come here, you will stay after you meet a handful of us. I'm confident in that. But what we can do as a county, implement some countywide zoning, not to control what comes here, but to manage what comes here and to do it the right way, to do it the Alamance County way, honoring our history while building our future. We can accomplish both of those things, and the money and revenue generated from development can go to the education system. It can go to public services. It can go to law enforcement. Teachers, policemen, firemen, public services, they take care of us. We need to be taking care of them, too. So yes, I think economic development is the key to bringing the education system up to date. The bond's taking care of bringing it somewhere close but we need to go further. And that's how we do it, is through economic development and growth. Thank you. And last, we have Bill Lashley. Uh, absolutely, I agree with economic development and education or go hand in hand. I believe any company wants to come to Alamance County, that's probably the first thing they're gonna look at. What's the schools look like? And when you have companies, you need companies to come in to increase the revenues, the tax base, and the, the education system that we have now in, in, in Alamance County is a good one. But we need to build on what we've already have uh, and, and uh, maintain what we have and build on it. Uh, I believe the Alamance Community College is a jewel. I know so many people who didn't have the means to go to college, chose Alamance Community College, but they really didn't know what they wanted to do. But yet they went to Alamance Community College and they found their passion. They found what they wanted to do for the rest of their life. And LMS Community College is great. And Elon University is, uh, is basically a stalwart in our community. Everyone supports Elon. Everyone loves this university. You folks have done a wonderful job with this, this place. Uh, but without businesses to support our education system, uh, it's going to be tough. It's going to be real tough, but I, I believe that we have uh, the right kind of um, goodies. Like James said, the people in Alamance County are great folks. Uh, I, I've been away from Alamance County for a long time, but every place I've ever been is always on the way back home because this place is wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We'll move on to our uh, final question of the night. Again, we have limited time with so many candidates, but we thank you for your time here. But in this last question, what I want you to do is think about one of the biggest challenges facing Alamance County in the next 10 years, perhaps besides education, since we've just covered that. So what's another challenge facing the county? And then particularly, I want you to tell us what are your plans as a commissioner, if you were to be elected, to address that particular challenge? Um, we're going to start with Pamela Tyler Thompson. Oh, <laughs> Random. Um, one of my biggest concerns for our county is the drug addiction crisis. I work with this, and I see the effects it has on the addict and the family around them. Um, it is a major crisis. I see it in our veterans because of what they've experienced with deployment. They come back. If there's an injury, opiates leads to cheap heroin. I've worked with that also. 
And um, I think it's just an absolute crisis of what I'm seeing the effects of this on children. Um, there's something called secondary trauma whenever a parent's going through things like this, whatever type of substance it is. Um, that child feels that pain. It's not their pain, but they feel it because they love their family. I just dealt with that before I left. And I just cannot tell you how important it is for us to get really serious about crime. And I mean a, a really serious crime special unit that can quit always having to go after the little dealer that comes to our schools or the dealer that's in the street getting kids and stuff hooked on drugs. It's the big guy that buys everything out. And when you see that human trafficking and drugs and crime, they're all in the same bucket because they're all based on money because they're using people to get rich on it. We just had a huge prostitution um, human trafficking ring that was busted. And I want to promise you something. When someone is arrested for prostitution, when they were probably three or four years old, they didn't want to grow up to be a prostitute. They wanted to be a fairy godmother. But their path led them a different way and is absolutely killing generations. I'm watching it happen in my school system. Vaping is an epidemic because now we're going to lace it with other drugs. We've got kids hitting the floor and sooner or later my biggest fear is we're going to have a child to die. So if we don't really face the core of this rottenness in our county and quit acting like, no, not my kid, because it can be your kid, just like a school shooting. That'll never happen in my school. I promise you, every school you've seen on television said the very same thing. So we have got to really buckle down on crime and what's all under it and how have the professionals trained to do the really big stuff to get rid of that because when you come into Alamance County, I don't want you here unless you're going to be healthy and you're going to want to have a great life and you're going to take really good care of your kids and you're going to support the school system. So I'm real hardcore about drug addiction. I know what it does to people. I see it in the jail. I see it in our schools and I'm seeing it in my county. So I'm just really serious about this. It's very, very passionate for me. Thank you. Uh, Henry Vines, you're next. Thank you. Uh, just wanted to say, too, that um, I am a product of the education system, too. Unfortunately, I'm a little bit old. I was the first graduate. I was the first class, the last class at Broad Street, first class at uh, Broadview, and the first class, a graduating class of Cummins High School. <laughs> so. What I feel like that this, that the biggest challenge that Alamance County is facing is actually two things in my, in my feelings. One is that we have got to create a balanced budget that is revenue neutral each and every year. That's the only way that Alamance County is going to be able to stay stable and keep growing. The second thing that I see is going to be a major issue is land planning development. I sit on the uh, land plan development steering committee. With the, with the growth that we are facing here in the county, without some kind of plan development, we're going to have industry inter interlocking with residential, which is already a problem here in the county. We have, as a county commissioners, we need to push this thing forward and we need to get it done so that. We don't have issues like the rock quarry coming up to us wanting to know why. If we know what's going on around us and what the land around us can be used for, then we can be, we can be understanding. Farming is very important. A lot of people don't understand farming. We have to be protected of our farmers. I also said on the first development plan of uh, volunteer ag districts and help set the plan in that. When you go and buy a piece of property, if, if they will do what they're supposed to do and tell you that you are entering into a volunteer ag district and what is associated with the smells, the dust, it's about informing the citizens of what's going on around them and what they're moving into. Those are the challenges that I think that are facing the commissioners, and we have to head this off and work on it head on. Thank you. Thank you. Dreama Caldwell. I think that we need to address living wages um, because that affects affordable housing and other issues 
uh, it's, it's very common to go to a fast food place and there's a grandmother or a grandfather that's working and they're working for very little. And yet things like social services are there to help, but because they're blood kin, they're not able to get a check and so they have to work. And so they're working for eight and nine dollars an hour. You know that most of the landlords in our county require you to make three times the rent. And so there's this misconception that we have an affordable housing problem. That's not the problem. The problem is that we have jobs that are not paying us any money here. And many people live in this county because we do have a lower tax rate compared to counties that are around us, but yet they work in other counties and they're spending their money in other counties. So it's important that the commission board, as new businesses come, we ask them, do they intend to pay our people a living wage? Do they intend to pay, may, uh, way, uh, do they intend to pay things like medical insurance and provide things like that? That is important. Again, that whole child, it's so important. You can't have children that are going to bed hungry because they lack money. They lack paying jobs and their parents are going to work every day, yet once they pay their rent, once they pay their lights, they don't have any money for food. And they're kind of caught in that middle trap. They don't make enough money to qualify for benefits, but they don't make enough money to pay for what they need. So I think it's important that we address living wages. And as a board, we need to, as businesses come to us, they need to tell us that they are going to pay our people a living wage, and that's important. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Blake Williams. Uh, I think the, pr the problem goes back to um, the lack of um, lack of education in in many situations. Um, I'm an advocate for the uh, folks who are, say, in downtown Burlington, who have lost their their job from the mill and they are on unemployment or subsistence or, or whatever. And I think we as a county need to track these folks and set up a system so that they can get into the community college. There are grants in, uh, available. There's foundation money available. We need to identify those and uh, give them the ability to go back to school and to get educated and that will, that will uh, take care of the financial issues. It's not a quick fix, obviously, but two years, and these folks can be there earning fifty to $80,000 with some of the jobs that are out there. So that's a concern, and it affects our, um, uh, you know, again, I, I said with the high school kids being um, not graduating from the high schools, and uh, this affects the communities economically. So that's where we need to do a better job there. Thank you. Thank you. you. Uh, Bill Lashley. I'm going to ask you the same questions James did. Would you like me to repeat the question? Yes, ma'am. Be happy to. What's one of the biggest challenges facing Alamance County in the next 10 years? And what are your plans as a commissioner to address that particular challenge? That's what I thought. Just want to make sure. Good. Happy uh, well, there seems to be, like in my opening statement, you know, uh, the, with the bond being passed for the school system, that's going to create a financial obstacle for our taxpayers. Uh, I think the taxpayers, uh, you know, in the last election, they voted f for the bond, but they didn't vote for the sales, quarter cent sales tax. That should tell you something. Uh, you know, looking forward with the bond being passed, I think it's important that we make sure we get the new school built. And I also think that we make sure that we get the new additions at Western High School and Southern High School. We need to make sure those get taken care of. Uh, I think we need to, um, you know, look at how we're going to tax our citizens to pay for it. We need to manage that quite wisely. I think another thing coming up in the next 10 years, uh, you know, it's right around the corner is reevaluations coming. And all the things that I just mentioned, you know, uh, the, my real estate friends tell me that real estate in, in Alamance County is growing about 4% a year. Well, if you take that 4% a year and, and, and put it on to the 15% increase in taxes that we got, I have a feeling the people who own property in Alamance County are going to have sticker shock when the reevaluation comes out. And I think that is going to have to be managed wisely as well. Um, you know, looking down the road in, in 10 years, that's, that's, a, that's a mighty long time. 
but we just need to make sure that we are good stewards of our finances because we can't do anything in Alamance County if we don't have a good financial base. Uh, that's what's going to dictate what we can and can't do. And as long as we manage that wisely, I think we can, we can achieve all these goals. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, John Paisley. Thank you. I think our number one concern for the next 10 years, the next decade, is safety. Our high sheriff, right there on the third row, Terry Johnson, please stand up, sir. <laughs> The case that I just mentioned earlier about the severe beating of a child, his patrol, his lieutenants, his detectives did a wonderful job. They were right on the scene. They took care of things. They got that poor child rushed down to UNC, to the hospital. Uh, they did everything right. That's because of good training. But guess what? In the next decade, next 10 years, the population for Alamance County is projected to increase 20,000 people. That's incredible. We've got to support law enforcement to have safe homes, safe schools, our children to be safe. And Terry can't do that all on his own without financial support. And same thing for Burlington City and all the other municipalities and so forth. We've got to be safe, and I think that is our number one concern. Uh, additionally, we need more SROs in our schools. You know, what happens if you don't have a presence of protection in your schools? That's where you see the downfalls in Florida and Colorado and everywhere else. This sheriff is doing a really, really good job, and we've got to support him financially. How do we do that? We bring in industry as all these guys and gals have just said. Uh, bring in and increase the tax base. We have more money. Mac Williams with the Chamber of Commerce is doing a wonderful job. But Mac, you gotta step it up. So, <laughs> and I mean that as a positive statement. Uh, Terry, next 10 years, 20,000 people, you're gonna have to step it up. And we as citizens with our homes are gonna have to step it up and be parents to our children and make sure that our children know how to behave and we raise them correctly. Thank you. Thank you. James Kirkpatrick. I think there's two. Okay. Um, and they're all tied back to the first two things that I <laughs> talked about. Um, it's infrastructure. It's skilled labor, which ties right back to growth, increasing the tax base so that we can handle the schools and we can handle the money. Everything that we're talking about up here is about money. And the only way we generate more money is to bring in more people, to bring in more industry, to bring in growth, but the right kind of growth. Well, as I said before, with countywide zoning, let's make sure we do it the right way. But it, it's, that's what it's gonna take. The only time government, whether it be state, federal, local, in my opinion, the only time government gets any bang for its buck is when it, when it installs a piece of infrastructure, when you put in a new roadway, when you put in a, a, a sewer line, when you put in a water line, because what does that do? It opens that land up to be developed. And when you develop that land and do it in a managed format, it increases your tax base, which allows you to do all of the things that we're talking about doing up here. You can't do them for free. And we must be good stewards of your money and keep your taxes at an affordable rate. And how do we address the skilled worker shortage? That man right there. I have worked with him on putting together an equipment operator program out of Alamance Community College. It's probably the great, one of the greatest experiences of my life. That place is fantastic. And whatever we can do to support Alamance Community College, we as a community should do it, whether it's with dollars or volunteer. All right, thank you. Um, Bob Bird. So uh, with my experience and my age, I tend to take a longer view of things, and I don't disagree with very much what was said up here today. You know, the, the ultimate objective is for everybody to be successful in my book, and, and that takes education, and I know we're not supposed to talk about <laughs> education, but everything is so interconnected, I, I can't not talk about it, because 
people that have a good education are likely to have better jobs and, and won't be in poverty and, and won't need to do those terrible things that Pam was talking about. And, and it just feeds into a healthy society. And like I said before, jobs can fix a lot of societal ills. Um, so education, economic development, bringing those jobs into the community. We got to protect our environment because, you know, like once farmland is gone, it's gone forever. Uh, zoning really needs to be seriously looked at. But one thing that uh, I'm going to go out on a little bit of a limb here that, have, that we haven't talked about uh, relates to a couple of things that I've learned uh, during my term as a commissioner. So I was arm twisted into attending a two-day racial equity training. And that was transformational for me on how I view racism, especially systemic racism, not necessarily individual acts of racism, but the, the system and, and how it manifests in our society in such profound ways. So we have tremendous racial disparities in every system that we have in our school education system and in our financial system, our criminal justice system, and you name the system, and, and they all have terrific racial disparities. And one thing that I was taught is that we will never fix those disparities until we address racism itself. So I've been a student of racial equity over the last four years, and, and I would invite everybody to join me. I see a lot of people in the room that have gone through the program, and, and most people that go through it say it's been transformational for them. So that's one thing, just to be aware of how it exists so th there's no simple solutions to this, but at least we can start dismantling those elements of systemic racism if we're aware of them to begin with. The other thing that was transformational for me was to learn about adverse childhood experiences. So there is such a correlation of this traumatic stress that kids grow up with, particularly in the first five years of life, that traumatic stress in, those, in that time period impacts a child's behavior, their cognitive skills, you know, their ability to learn, um, their emotional skills, and so we have a lot of what people might consider problem kids, behavioral problems. Well, discipline isn't the solution. It, the, the solution is to understand the root cause of those behaviors. And, and so we need to be a, more of a trauma-informed society. So th those are kind of long-term things that I would like to work on uh, with the remainder of my life. And, and, and use my position as a county commissioner to do that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Jim Johnson. Thank you. There are actually two things. Okay. One is we need countywide zoning to prevent things from happening, such as a snow camp mine, where in, in, cities have nice, nice planning regulations which control uh, development in, in an orderly fashion. But uh, the county does not have any zoning regulations, and countywide, outside of the cities, we need that control. Second thing is first responders. I think we need to give the sheriff's department the resources that they request to uh, accomplish their mission. I fully support the 287G program which has, uh, Sheriff uh, Johnson has uh, recently implemented, and I fully support the uh, expansion of the uh, jail cells to handle the, uh, the people that, that come, into the, come in under the program. Finally, I am a, a for legal, legal immigration. Thank you very much. Thank you. And last, we have Kristen Powers. Um, so one of the um, things I wanted to do running this time was to hear what com the community actually need. Um, I talked to a lot of community leaders, and I love y'all, and you're awesome. But I wanted to also speak to the people who tend to either not make it to meetings or are left out of meetings. Um, we, my team and I interviewed over 300 individuals um, throughout the county. Um, identified a lot of different issues. In an order, quantitatively, um, the number one issue is education, but the second issue is racism and discrimination, which somewhat surprised me um, because I was told never to talk about that stuff. It's too, too risky, and I think, you know, Bob talked about racial equity training. Um, 
And so that was number two. Um, number three was health care and mental health care. Number four was school buildings. Number five were environmental issues. And we took all those responses along with the qualitative comments um, and combined them to a platform that's investing in public education, securing our basic needs, improving access to crucial services, and fighting to protect our environment. Um, we have handouts. My volunteer, Megan, who's on this side, um, she has the handouts if you want to see them. And I want to talk a little bit more about um, the environment, environmental part. So, um, you know, I think uh, people, when they think environment, they think trees and maybe hugging them. Um, but it's so much more than that. I think it's <laughs> both the snow camp mine, um, it's the pipeline, um, it's the mom I met at the public housing um, development or unit where she said she keeps her window open all year because she's afraid of the mold growing and her kids getting asthma and those kid, then her energy bills go up. Um, it's the uh, native community I've talked to a lot in the Pleasant Grove area whose um, propane heat t gas heat um, bills are in the hundreds of dollars every winter. Um, and I think, you know, like a lot of people are concerned about this from many different angles. I think it, from business, from um, even your faith. I had um, one of the responses I got was saying, and I can see if I can find it real quick, but basically that. Um, we are, she said, we are stewards of God's creation. He created, created, created us and our planet to work care and take care of, and we are not doing a good job. And I think we can center that. Um, and then also, I'll just finish by saying in response um, to the last comment, you know, I think people know, especially Bob and I have made public comments before, um, we believe that people are, um, use people-centered language, um, people are not illegal, um, and that they are... Uh, <laughs> And there's many different reasons that we're here, um, many different ways we get here. My mom's from England, but no one really called her out on immigration. And I think there's a, we can talk about race and class and different issues there. Um, and I think that if immigration is, I mean, it is our, it's a major issue in Alamance County. So I think um, it's something we need to talk about, but do it in a way that centers people um, and doesn't marginalize our communities. All right, let's give a round of applause to all of our candidates this evening.